Indonesia, a country filled with more than 17,000 islands. There are many fascinating habitats, from luscious rainforests to tropical beaches. There are thousands of niches for a huge variety of spectacular animals to fill. Indonesia is full of wonders, including the iconic and the slightly obscure. This rich diversity is supported by fire, air, earth and water. Lying on the Pacific Ring of Fire, Indonesia has around 130 active volcanoes, making it the most volcanic country on the planet. And where there are tropical volcanoes, there is an abundance of life. Over time, volcanoes on the ocean floor erupt and steadily emerge above the sea to form volcanic islands. These islands then drive speciation as wildlife must adapt to their unique surrounding. And as a result, on volcanic islands, there are many endemic species found nowhere else on the planet. Volcanic islands make up 5% of Earth's land, but are home to almost 20% of its species. The volcanoes are as unique as the wildlife found in Indonesia. Within the crater of Mount Ijen lies the world's largest acidic lake. And as night falls, drops of molten blue flow across its rock. Sulphur constantly escapes through the cracks, and as it reacts with oxygen, it catches fire and emits the soft blue glow. While there may not be much life within this harsh environment, Indonesia's fiery volcanoes are the very foundation to sustaining so much life here. As volcanic ash and gases contain many nutrients, creating extremely fertile soil. Partly because of its volcanism, Indonesia is the second most biodiverse nation on the earth. The diversity of mammal species in Indonesia is unrivaled by any other country. Of the 670 known mammal species here, over 220 of them are bats. These are large flying foxes. With a wingspan of one meter, they are one of the largest species of bat in the world. And whilst the flying fox's scientific name is Bambrus, they are in fact fruit bats. Fruit bats are incredibly important for the ecosystem as they provide services such as pollination and seed dispersal. Each evening, the flying foxes leave their cave and travel up to 50 kilometers in the search of fruit. In some regions of Indonesia, bats have been found to be the primary pollinators of durians, a fruit which Indonesia produces around 860 tonnes of annually and brings in over 250 million US dollars across Southeast Asia. By transporting seeds through the air, fruit bats directly help over 280 species of fruit, benefiting both the economy and their ecosystem. Almost a third of Indonesia's bats are threatened with extinction, mainly due to habitat loss and hunting. Many bats are often considered vermin and pests. But without bats, Indonesia may have a completely different plant composition, meaning that these airborne animals are essential for life in this country and the spectacular life found on land. In a remote corner of Sulawesi, there are crested black macaques. They consume 145 different types of fruit. And whilst figs and cashews may be their favourite, this level of diversity is what sustains them throughout the year. These macaques are highly social animals, with some groups containing up to 100 members. So it's important to maintain those special bonds with their favourite individuals. But it isn't always one big happy family. It can be difficult to navigate such a big social group. 
So how do they do it? Well, it's all in the smile. Like humans, they have many facial gestures, and depending on how they smile, it may mean that they are being submissive or friendly. They're wanting to play or to mate. For every adult male, there are between three and five females, but females find the alpha most attractive. So competition for the top spot can be fierce. On average, alpha males only hold their position for one year. So they have to be on a constant alert for any smaller male trying to work up the ranks and steal the monopoly of women. Luckily, these macaques have a high social tolerance meaning disagreements are usually mild and they're quick to forgive. Unfortunately, these friendly monkeys are one of the most critically endangered primates on the planet. Some scientists believe there are less than 2,000 individuals left in the wild and they could be extinct within the next 35 years. They are mainly threatened by illegal hunting and logging. But it isn't just these monkeys that depend on the forests. An abundance of creatures call this forest home. And the jungle is also important in mitigating climate change. Of the carbon stored across the globe's forests, more than a quarter is held within Southeast Asia's forests. Tropical rainforest only covers 6% of the globe's land surface but are the single greatest carbon storage above ground. Equally important carbon stores are oceans. Coral reefs are often referred to as the rainforests of the sea due to hosting a wealth of life. Coral reefs cover less than 0.2% of the sea's surface yet over a quarter of all marine species rely on them. Indonesia lies within the Coral Triangle, an area where marine biodiversity is so great it is matched nowhere else on the planet. Most corals are colonial animals. What we see is a calcareous skeleton covered in up to millions of genetically identical organisms known as polyps. Algae lives inside the tissue of the coral. They live in a symbiotic relationship with the coral providing shelter and nutrients for the algae and the algae providing food for the coral by photosynthesizing inside it. If the coral's environment allows them to, they will continue living forever. But now, as a direct result of climate change and rising sea temperatures, they have been stopped. It only takes the ocean to rise by a couple of degrees for a few weeks for the coral to start bleaching. Coral bleaching is a reaction to thermal stress. Just like the human body has a fever to expel a virus or bacteria, the corals eject the foreign bodies in them their microalgae partner, but by getting rid of algae, they sentence themselves to death as they eliminate their primary food source. An ecosystem that should be teeming with life becomes desolate. Scientists have predicted that if the current rate of destruction doesn't change, 70% of our reefs could disappear within the next 30 years. Luckily, there is hope yet. Coral Guardians, based near the Komodo National Park, are working with local communities and restoring reefs which have been destroyed by dynamite fishing practices. They collect broken fragments of coral, which are still alive but have been physically separated from the skeleton and from the mother colony. But it won't survive long. 
so it is transported onto a substrate where the coral attached itself and can then grow into a mature colony. At their site in Indonesia, in the past seven years, 47,000 fragments have been transplanted. Not only has this restored the biodiversity by bringing 30 times more fish back into the area, but this transportation method can allow corals that are more resistant to stresses such as climate change to develop. It is conservation organisations like these who take action and monitor wildlife, who expand scientific knowledge and implement change that are giving the wildlife of this mega diverse country a fighting chance, meaning the aerial, the terrestrial and the aquatic wildlife can continue to support this incredible ecosystem that was forged by fire. <laughs>